He was in Anthony Johnson's corner on Saturday night. He has been with him for quite some time. He is the head man over in South Florida, Combat Club, if you will. That's not the official name of the team, but um, one of the top coaches in the sport right now. He is Henry Hooft, and he joins us right now via the phone. Henry, are you there? I'm here, Ariel. Thank you very much for joining us, Henry. I really appreciate it. Um, I know, you know, things didn't go your way on Saturday. So, of course, we want to talk about the main event. Um, first things first, though, did you know that win or lose, Anthony was going to retire on Saturday? Uh, no, not that he would re- retire on Saturday, but uh, we talked about retiring and uh, and the end of the career for, for, for some time. And I know he had... Uh, has an interest interest in other things he wants to do in life. We talked about it a lot, and uh, we had we had an idea of we talked about of getting that belt, getting the belt, and then probably drop it in the middle. You know, there was like an idea that we had uh, that he had, and that we talked about. But I didn't uh, really knew that on Saturday that he would retire on Saturday. But I knew about his feelings, and I'm not surprised. You know. Okay, so that was my next question. Um, are you surprised he actually went ahead with it? I mean. It's one thing to talk about. It's another thing to actually do it. When you heard that he actually did it in the cage, did that kind of surprise you? Uh, well, I was, I was, uh, I was uh, right after the fight. I was uh, on the cage, and he came to me, speaker, and he said, "I fucked up, you know, something." And I said, "Come on, man! It's I know it's just hard, but keep your head up. It's already done. It's this is what the coach had to say after a loss. You cannot just at, the, at that moment talk about stuff." And I was at the cage, and he said, "Keep your head up, you know. Uh, just, just go on. Let's go." Then I stepped off and it was very busy in the cage. So I walked back to get my put another shirt on and I wanted to wait him at the doctor's place. And when I was in the back, I heard that he was like saying that he was retiring and, and, and looking for me and looking for, for other people. And I was like, oh shit. And I was on the way back. Then I saw him at the curtain. And then when he was with me and he cried with me and he talked to me and everything, then I really, it really fell through. But I'm not surprised because again, we talked, I talked about it. Uh, I'm already six years with Anthony. Uh, I know him for so long and, um, and this last couple of months has uh, just uh, been difficult to all of us with all the stuff that happened. Uh, happened. Uh, it was a crazy time. Uh, we're getting in better waters now, and uh, we were just hoping that it was uh, like uh, a next thing for us. And and and, and also, uh, uh, we beginning six years going and ending like uh, with the title, and uh, it was just hard. Uh, like like he was very disappointed. I was very really disappointed too as a coach. So. Um, it was strange for me to hear uh, that that he did it there, but uh, that was his moment and it's Anthony's moment. So he uh, he did it when he thought it was good, and uh, I think we all need to respect it. And I respect it. And I had my moment with him alone, and I think that's very important because before everybody everybody else starts asking, talking about it, I got a lot of bad shit over me and everything. You know how it goes on, on the social media when everything is good, everything is good. Like I leave in my fire as well. Mm-hmm. I never left anybody. Um, especially uh, me and AJ, we're very good together. And um, that's all unimportant, you know. It's just p- people just start s- spreading out stupid stuff and like him quitting the fight and just throwing the fight, all kind of stuff, man. It's all bullshit, you know. That's has nothing to do with our sport, you know. So um, I just feel bummed because I wanted to end this one with, uh, with the title and he was, and he has all the qualities to do it, but he didn't do it. And we'll get to that stuff in a second, but I'm just curious, could you tell us what he has planned for the future? What's his job that he's talking about? Well, I, 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 first of all, I'm not going to go into in de- de- details because I don't know the real details, but um, yeah, uh, everybody sees his pages and uh, it has to do with football. And uh, I don't know, I, I didn't really discuss the details, but uh, he seems to uh, be busy with this for a while and enjoying it and, and um uh, so it has something to do that's totally different with MMA. So, uh, and I think if you really want to really want to stop fighting, you really need to step away from it because if you keep hanging in there, you probably uh, get lured back in there. And uh, and then he's 32 years old, so you never know what happens in the future. But uh, if you want to step away from it, you really need to step away from it, or you need to be, become a coach like I did after my fight career. But um, so it's totally different than the MMA, and uh, I think it has something to do with uh, with football and. You look at his Twitter, you look at his... Uh, uh, oh, uh, we, we lost you there for a second. Are you still there, Henry? I'm here. Okay, yeah, we lost you. You said if you look at his Twitter and then we lost that last part of your answer. Oh, no, I said if you look at his Twitter, Twitter and his social media, uh, people will find out sooner or later what is really going on. But uh, um, 
uh, I don't know the, the details, but um, he's going to rest up and going to enjoy it because it was six years of hard work. Anthony's a hard worker, you know? So it is something with the LA Rams. I think so. I, I, listen, I'm a European guy. I know everything about soccer, but not, <laughs> not about the NFL. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, fair enough. Um, Now let's go to the fight. What was the game plan, Henry? What was the game plan? And and is did we see the game plan in the fight? Come on, man. First of all, you know me. I always talk about game plans. I was a fighter myself. If you, the game plan it was very simple. There's only one game plan that uh, you need to do: is not wrestle or not come close to DC. And uh, and AJ is a guy who normally does that. And he doesn't want to wrestle because his strength is in his striking, his stand up and everything. So. This has nothing to do with the game plan, nothing to do with training, because in training uh, he didn't really do much different than uh, he normally does. So uh, the game plan was not to wrestle anybody, and uh, oh, it was in his own mind that he wanted to do that, but it was not the game plan. And, uh, and if you look at the, uh, some guy just sent me this morning the corner, the corner stuff that they they read out in the corner, what happened, and you see that we that we all nobody really wanted him to wrestle, nobody wanted to him to come close to DC because it's going to be like playing the other guy's game. Uh, although I always said the whole time that DC not has bad hands. I think Anthony's uh, strength is always there. And me as a striker, I always prefer uh, fight to start standing up. I always prefer the, the knockouts and stand up. So I, I, my, my game plan is always to stand up, take a distance, take your time for every fight and just try to, to, to look where your strengths are. And uh, that's, of course, that's not grappling and wrestling against the cage, you know? So why do you think he did that? Well, that's another thing. Uh, if you if you ever fought before, and again, it's just in general to everybody that listens here, if you were a fighter, you ever had fought before, and especially a couple of fights, especially at the level, and some sometimes stuff happens, and sometimes you can't explain. Only the fighter can explain. Not the trainer, not the audience, nobody. Only the fighter himself knows what at that moment makes him make these mistakes or do stuff that's wrong, but also the stuff that does goes good and he knocks people out at the straightest moment or with a strange kick or whatever. Sometimes stuff goes on in the fighter's mind. People don't understand. It's, it's not so easy to explain. And, and again, you can be the best coach in the world. You can have the best training partners, but when you go in the cage and closes, it's you that has to do what he has to do and where he's good at. And if you don't do it for what kind of reason, Anthony knows, and he will figure out the next couple of days. You, you can't right after the fight say, this was wrong, that was wrong, this was wrong. Oh, he didn't follow the game plan and blame, blame everything on, on him alone or whatever. There's nothing to do with the game plan stuff. It happens at that moment when you're alone with your opponent and you make decisions at the wrong moment, wrong time. And that's only fighters that fought themselves before really has these moments before. They know what it is. Sometimes stuff just happens and sometimes stuff just blocks. And, and maybe he was more busy with, retiring than not. We, we don't know. People are talking about it. We don't know what is going on in his mind at that moment, but I know one thing. If the normal AJ would show up at that night, it would be a totally different fight. So that's all I know as a coach. And I was really surprised what happened there, like all of us. We were really, really surprised what happened there. And, um, and only AJ knows because he, he can do so much better than what, what, what he did Saturday. But again, the fighter fights, he knows better than everybody, you know? So I, I've read the transcript of what you and the rest of the corner were saying, and it's clear that you were getting very frustrated. What was going through your mind? And did you at some point just say, you know what, I'm, I'm done shouting instructions here. I have no way to justify what is happening in this fight. Yeah, but, but that's, some, yeah, that's true. That at, one moment I was, I, at one moment I was just like, I don't even need to talk anymore because it, it's already too far away. You know, I mean... Uh, I mean, the grip of a, of a coach, sometimes I have these good moments that he can pull somebody through at the last moment, at the last round, with Eddie, with his, with his eye, with, with, with Gilbert. Uh, some fight that you can say to your, to, your, to your fighter, let's go, man, you see the other guy's tired, you can still pull it off. But if three people are screaming in the, in the corner and everybody's saying the same stuff and, and you don't do it, then at one moment you need to leave it and, and, and let the fighter figure it out, you know? And if he doesn't figure it out, then what can you do? And again, I tell you not because I want to say, that the fighters don't know what they're doing. I've been knocked out. I, I lost fights too. I, I, it's, I know it. I know what it is sometimes. You, your head is just not there. You, you, you listen to the voice. You hear the corners. You know what you need to do, but it's just not there. And, and that, was, that was happening. And I recognize that. And then I can scream even more, but it doesn't help anymore. And 
then you can just sit back. You just need to sit back and, and, and hopefully let him figure it out. And, and then when you see a new moment, you can jump in there. But to scream with four or five people and, and, and Anthony's not listening again, I know him for six years, then, uh, then it's just better to be quiet, you know, because it doesn't help. Did you talk to him after about that? Did you ask him why he did that? Did he give you a proper explanation? Well, at the moment when the fire was done, he was on the cage and I went to the cage and, and he came up to me and said, fuck man, I made a mistake. And I said, eh, you made a mistake, Anthony, but now it's already done, you know? That's the, that's the explanation. Because again, at that moment, there's so much emotions going through your head, you can say whatever and ask him stuff and you will, you will never get the straight answer, the good answer or the answer that you want to hear. You need to, that needs to be, that needs to go to his head for a couple of days, and, and, and then in a relaxed moment, as a trainer and a fighter, then you talk about it, and then you figure it out what's going to happen or what happened that night. But it is the worst thing for a coach is when your fighter loses. Together you sit in the dressing room, you don't know really what you need to say, uh, or you, you. And even the next day when you fly back, you sit next to each other. You feel bad because he gave him, a, he gave all, and and you, and you didn't, you didn't win the fight. And sometimes you, you're hurt, you're, you're injured. And, yeah, you, know, you fight back, and it's just like it's painful when you win. It's beautiful when you lose that, and it, it doesn't make any sense to right after the fight uh, tell him what he was doing wrong or why he did this or why he did that. That doesn't help anymore. The fight is already done. You you lost your chance to, to win the belt, and again, then then there is no need for you to talk. You go to the dressing room, change up. Go back, take a drink, re- relax, and the next couple of days you figure it out. That's it. The only problem is that this was his, what he said his last fight, and it was for the title. The second time we were so close to getting it, and I know he has all the abilities, and, and that's, the, that's the worst thing for a trainer, that you see his abilities, you see the qualities, and it doesn't work. Hmm. It doesn't work at, at the moment that it needs to work. That's very hard for a trainer, but also for the fighter. Don't, don't believe that he doesn't want to win a title, you know? And again, I speak as a fighter myself. I knew how it was. I knew I was a champion. I lost my belt. It's, it's all very, very difficult. Fighters know how lonely it is, you know, winning or losing. So, again, it's a very difficult moment. I mean, it's very difficult to explain that moment right after the fight or right before the fight when yeah. you go after the fight. It's very difficult to explain. Considering your relationship with Anthony and, and how highly you think of him and how close you were to finally getting that belt with him, would it be fair to call this maybe one of your more frustrating nights as a coach to see it unfold that way and that wasn't what you worked on? I think for both of us, yeah. Yeah, for both of us, for sure. For sure, for both of us. Uh, that he had a chance. I mean, I mean, again, I have all the respect for DC and he's great and he beat AJ two times. There are not a lot of people who can say that. Remember, AJ lost only to DC. He, doesn't, he didn't lose to nobody else. He knocks everybody out. So DC is great. He did really good to him. But uh, I saw this evening was the evening. Everything was good. He, he had the chance to do it, and um, and and then and then and you don't do it for him. It's more frustrating for me even, but also for me as a trainer. We we do this work six years together. We travel together. We work hard together. We work to a point where we think now it's going to be the chance that we can get it. And again, I don't need to have a belt to to make me look like I'm a good trainer or nothing. My my results speak for themselves and. I had a belt myself as a fighter, so I don't need that belt hanging in my closet to show everybody I'm a good trainer. But we worked so hard, and he was so close, and he has all the chance. And he didn't get really beat. He he, he got beat by himself, not by an opponent. Uh, like, really, this fight. He, he got beat by himself. He made a mistake. He did something that was wrong to do, and everybody makes mistakes. But he did it himself, so he got beat by himself, and that's that's always shit to see. And and again, I had the same problems. If you got beat by yourself, that's very very difficult to handle, and it's also very difficult to describe as a coach. If the other guy's just better, Ariel, what what's what's the problem if somebody's better and he beats you? You're you're in, the, you're, you're in, the, in this business. One guy's going to win. Two guys fighting. One guy, you win and you lose. Not a problem. If for titles, of course, totally different. But you can always win. But if you lose because you didn't do what you can do. Then you feel frustrated. And again, he feels more frustrated than, than me and a lot of other people are talking about him. Sure, he's frustrated. But as a coach, of course he's frustrated. It's your student, you know? Six years, we worked together. So I wanted him to, to end with this crown, you know? I wanted it. Is that why, Henry, you walk to the back? In other words, do you typically not do that? And were you frustrated and said, oh, you know, I don't want to be here for the crowning of DC again and and then in hindsight it may have looked weird to some people when he called for you and you weren't there 
Yes, it was. L- listen, I first of all, I spoke with him already right after the fight. I was the first guy who was on the cage, not in the cage. Because in the case, two people can, can go inside. And there was already people from the, the corner, from our team was already in there. So he came to me and we talked a little bit. I said, take it easy. When I walked back, the case was already full. But of course you pissed. I was pissed too. So at that moment, I'm not going to stay here waiting around the, the same shit. And last time when he beat uh, Glover Teixeira, he knocked him out. I was in the case. And when everybody came in, and I was celebrating winning. I walked out and was already packing my suitcase in the back and I was already on my way to the hotel and I didn't make the, the team photo too. That's just the way I am. But I went to the back just to wait him over there, have the moment at the doctors because I knew it was going to get crazy. And then that, that looked weird to other people. But if I know that he's going to make his end over there in the cage, uh, I wouldn't go away. You know, it, it looks maybe strange to people, but I'm not a guy who let somebody else there because he lost. That's the stupidest thing ever. Mm. When he lost to Belfort, I was in Brazil with him. When he lost to DC, when he didn't make weight in Kansas City, when he never, when he did, didn't make weight, I was the guy always protecting him. I was always, for, always there for him. I, I don't even need to explain this for to other everybody else. But people who think that I leave my fighter there. I didn't want to be there because he lost. They're just dumb people. I don't even need to explain to these people. But of course, I was frustrated, like everybody else was frustrated. So that was that moment that I walked away. And when he came to the back, we had a talk. We had an emotional moment. We we, we talked. We, we cried a little bit, and and and, and that's it. And uh, him and me texted the whole night and the next morning. And I didn't respond to these people on, on social media because I don't want to do that because it doesn't help in any way. It's between me and Anthony, and we don't have any problems. I'm just disappointed like he was too we were so close we worked so hard for it it's it like you just you had your last guest and they talked about justin like who's re- doing a really really good job at team alpha male, you know mm. but we we, we all, all all the trainers we do a lot of stuff people people think we have a luxury life we fly everywhere we make a lot of money and we do it because we love it we put all our passion in there we put everything in there with the fighters too we fly with them we leave our families behind we do whatever we do for the fighters so of course you want some juice back. Of course you want to win. Is that a bad? Is that a bad thing? That's not a bad thing, you know. So we do it with all our passion. So if something doesn't happen, you're frustrated. You are at that moment. Then a couple of hours later, or a day later, uh, you get back to it. And you think about it. And you think, okay, maybe I did something wrong or not. But you just get frustrated. But believe me, I was Monday. This Monday. This morning I was already training 20 people again. 10 people in the UFC. The next fight is already lined up again. So people have to understand our trainers, it's not like a luxury life and everything is good. We work hard and we put our heart in, heart in there. So sometimes we are frustrated, but we're also very, very happy for the fighters. And again, I can't say nothing bad about a- AJ. Uh, all the moments that he gave, gave a lot of people, but especially me, silencing the crowd in Sweden, all the stuff that he did, all the beautiful knockouts, the, the striking stuff that he showed and. And also as a person, he's a really, really, really good person, a real good person. So um, hopefully one day uh, uh, <laughs> he, he gets a little bit bored for the other stuff he does and he comes back and 32 years, uh, we can do it at heavyweight. I, uh, I would love to see that. But uh, but this is, a little frustration is not bad for a trainer, uh, Ariel. And you know me yourself too. I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a boogeyman. Do, do you, uh, that's actually my next question. Do you believe this is really his last fight or do you think deep down a couple of years he comes back? Uh, that, that's another thing. I, I was a fighter. I was probably not the best in the world, but I was a fighter. You never, as a fighter, you can never really quit. And saw so this weekend, John Wayne Barr at 40 years old, knocking a guy out with a head kick and just getting it. Uh, I just, I don't know what he's going to do, and he's going to do his thing. But uh, my door is always open for him, and I hope, uh, I hope, uh, hopefully, maybe one day it happens. And uh, you never know in this game, you know. But. He's a smart guy. If he does it, he does it for a reason. He doesn't just do it because he wants to be in there. So, uh, but uh, I'll be crazy enough not uh, not to like it. But at this moment, we just we have to uh, rinse this off. Uh, again, we're already working with, with with the other guys. We're working, but in my head, every yesterday I thought about it. This morning I thought about it before this interview because. First of all, I didn't really want to do any interviews because I think we're going to talk only about this problem between me and and and. And what happened there, I walked away. I need to defend myself. And, and you know what? At the same evening, we had uh, Kamaru Usman, who fought a great fight, who's getting better and better. Desmond did his debut. Let's all snow under all the negative shit that we have. We have good people and good stuff going on. So, But I, I need to say this so everybody kind of have my uh, side of the story. And uh, that's why I want to do it. And 
that's why I'm here on the radio, you know? I, and I appreciate you coming on very much. Um, by the way, in hindsight, do you regret not making a bigger deal about the weigh-in? Um, because you guys, you know, you didn't, you know, cry foul or anything like that, and, and some yeah. have. Uh, do you think that you should have? No, man, what is that? I mean, that's typically all the that's drama for nothing. Listen, you fight, you fight. If it's one pound or two pounds or whatever, man, come on, man, you just fight each other. Mm. Just, at that moment, you just want to fight. If you want to fight, you fight. I, again, uh, it was so, we were happy that the fight was on. If you want to fight for the title, and you're happy. if you were 10 pounds over, okay, that's a little bit different. But And it was a little bit fun, funny. And then and another, another thing was everybody was at the weigh-in. Well, I was still packing everything upstairs because we did the weight club with Anthony. We waited to the last moment. But um, it, it doesn't matter to, to cry about it when it's already done. And again, yes, I saw that the fight, I saw that he wasn't looking like he was normally looking. So that's why I thought that was the right moment, you know. So don't cry about it at the weigh-ins. Don't don't make problems at the weigh-ins. Make him pay for it in the fight. That didn't happen, you know. But you you can always blame other people for everything. The only thing you need to do as a fighter is take control of it. Don't wait for the judges. Knock them out. Don't look at weight classes. Just beat them. If they're too heavy, you're too fast. <laughs> so it doesn't really, really matter, you know. A couple of pounds. Come on, man. We've grown up, man. Come on. Um, as you mentioned... Other than what happened in the main event, some very good things happened for the team, and you have other fighters who are doing good things as well, and of course, well-documented, the split, Black Suns and all that. Are you happy with where things are right now for you as a coach? Um, I know you're doing the, the the work over at Combat Club, and a lot of big names are there, and a lot have followed you. Are you content with where things are in your life as a coach? Yes, I am. I am, I am of course, I am very happy now to do stuff together. I'm together with Greg Jones, you know, and... Uh, uh, we have we have Jack, Jack Bonacci and we got Corey. We got the guys that were with us all together, and we moved over. And now it's like an open minded, open minded thing. We don't have any drama, and and, and uh, we want to keep it to the small uh, group of coaches that we have now, and just enjoy training with each other. Get the people that want to train, and also the people that we want to train. Not people just got signed up, and we have to train everybody. And uh, so it's it's a very comfortable situation to do it. It's just like. Uh, I would have done it, uh, rather have, would have done it with the UFC title there, of course, but uh, we got some new kids coming, some really up-and-coming guys, and, that's some, and again, some, some names that are training with us now, uh, because we're not a real, we, we are a team, we're training with each other, but we are not put a team uh, name on it, because I think it, it needs to go about the fighters more, it's more uh, Team Anthony, or more Team Michael Johnson, or more Team Bobby Law, or more Team whoever is there, it's about the fighter more than just a uh, name, because Otherwise, you're going to get team against team and team against that and all kind of drama. When fighters just fight each other, it's much more easy. And you see nowadays, a lot of fighters train with other coaches because they think they're the best coaches for them, you know? So uh, I think it's a great thing. And uh, the, the only thing, I, I love coaching. Uh, my passion is with fighting. Uh, I, I hate to lose and, uh, and everything, but still my passion is with fighting. So it's going to be all good from here, you know? Last thing, and again, Henry, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I can't thank you enough. If and when we see Robbie Lawler fight in the summertime, will you be in his corner? Well, there's possibilities there, yeah. Yeah, the possibility is there. I mean, I mean I'm, uh, I'm doing some striking work with him, so if he thinks I'm good enough to be in his corner, then I will do it. I like Robbie Lawler. Okay? He likes to bang. He, uh, he's excited, so if you ask me to corner him, I'll be there. But he hasn't asked you yet. He hasn't ever fight yet, Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> but he is training with you, right? He's training with me. Yeah, people see it on yeah. the videos, and they're not a big secret. We're just training. We we have a good thing going on. So yeah, we're just training. It's nice. It's good to have him there. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with him. Um, again, thank you so much, Henry. I'm sorry things didn't work out in the main event, but again, congrats on the other two wins on uh, on Saturday night. Do you have anyone on the card off the top of my head this weekend in Kansas City? No, we got the, the first one, the real first. Big event is Chess Kelly at uh, Dallas, and uh, and then and then we again we got a couple of guys that are coming up uh, under Sugan Thai is going to fight soon, and, and again Kamar Guzman, watch the guy, one seventy yes. pounder, he's 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 going to be something. So watch that guy. All right, thank you, Henry. Appreciate it. Okay, see you guys. Bye All right, bye. there he is, Henry Hooft. And yes, I I do echo what he said about Kamar Usman. 
Uh, very impressive. Now five wins at, at welterweight, calling out Neil Magny, said he wanted to fight Neil Magny in Dallas. I don't think that that is going to happen a little too soon, but uh, certainly a fight I'd love to see. He's been calling big names, time to step him up, and he's uh, he's backing up his words. Very dominant performance on, on Saturday night in Buffalo. 